Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the Back Office Teardown Lab. You can see I have some battery cells here that I've salvaged from things. So here's a 3.7 volts, 11.8 watt, 11.84 watt hours, 300, 3,200 milliamp hours. And here's a KO, 1,000 milliwatt hours. So this one is approximately three times the density of this one. So this one's a little bit thinner. But if you see one, two, three, and then maybe a gap to make up a bit for the thinness. So there you go, three times more. Now, if you recall from earlier videos, a while back, way back, I actually got a bunch of these little modules. And these are, just says 9080. There's not really much description here. They were just from a random selection of, you know, Alibaba style modules that I bought on the internet. And these apparently are power bank modules. So I thought, wouldn't it be a bit of fun to see if we can make use of our batteries by, uh, <coughs> pardon me, frog in my throat, by hooking them up to these things. And I'm just looking, you have the plus and minus, battery plus minus, but I'm not seeing a kind of a temperature lug here. Um, I'm not sure what you do with the sense lug. Let's just check one thing. It's interesting enough they have a third contact, but I think that is just another ground. So we'll put that B minus to the center lug. Oh, uh, I don't know. No. Hmm, the center lug is actually more of a positive lug. So I don't know how the um, sense works really, if it's needed on the battery end or if it's needed on the device end. I'll work that out as appropriate. So, first thing to do, I think we're just going to try this little one here, this little fella. He's seen some action, he's seen some things. And I'm just going to go for it, just whack off the leads. And while we're there, I've got this USB charging thing. Charging a nice pink wire, we're going to hook that up. In fact, I'll just hook it up now, ready. It's ready to go. And we're going to use another piece of equipment, which is my nice and simple charge doctor. We're going to use the simple one because you can see the screen better. So first things first, I'm going to chop off the connector. And I'm not going to be so slapdash as to cut off all three contacts at once, thus shorting them all out. So I'm just going to do one, two, and three. But I don't know what we're doing with the white just yet. I don't know if that's necessary. So I'm just going to peel that back. So we're just going to worry about the negative and the positive. So we've got our two wires there. And we're just going to simply tin those and solder them that away. So that's the positive and the negative. So if you're doing this at home, you're going to want to be a bit careful. You get the polarity right because you don't want any lithium battery blowy uppy disasters. And if you're doing your tinning, just give it a twist too. And you're asking me already, I can feel it. Andrew, why aren't you poking it through the holes on your PCB before soldering them in? Um, I don't know really, I just never do. Are you a, are you a hole poker or are you just a surface pad applier? I mean, it should be stronger if you poke something through the hole, shouldn't it? it goes through all the like layers of the PCB, acts like a via. But yeah, I don't know. I just never do really. Maybe I should start doing it. Maybe you can convince me it's a worthwhile thing. I think the reason I don't do it though is because when you put wire through holes, sometimes the insulation will start to melt and you get a whole lot of mess. Come on, stay put just for a second. Helping hands, that's something. Every month, I say, I'm going to invest this month in some helping hand. Never do, never do. Right, so we're hooked up. Well, that, that was easy. So if we put that on, yeah, look at that. Five volts. I mean, you can't get better than that. I mean, it's clearly doing it. If I, uh, I need to get like a USB load, don't I, so I can show you guys it doing something. But it's okay, I've got something. We'll get something, it's fine. What is the worst kind of USB load? Well, here is a USB hard disk drive, which just happened to be handy. And I know it's probably going to zap this thing. 
Here's an example, see what happens. Oh no. The USB is actually driving. And a second LED seems to have come on here. So there's two LEDs. There's LED 1 and LED 2. And it's coming. It's using... Let's see the amps. Quarter of an amp. Wow. Okay. Fair enough. I take it back. That does work. So it does seem to have that sort of circuitry in it that detects when it's actually boosting or not. Although it does seem to be giving enough. This thing seems to be able to run off just some sort of parasitic amount of current. Now let's see if we can charge it. So that was LED 2 came on, by the way, when we had our load. So we're going to put it on our charger. Yeah, an LED 2 is coming on flashing. In fact, there's no LED 1 populated there, interestingly enough. So I don't know what LED 1 would have done. Hmm, okay. So that looks like we don't necessarily need this wire. So I might just tape that to the battery when I decide how we're going to package this. Let's do the other one, shall we? Let's see if our bigger battery has got any go in it. And this one's much simpler. Look, this one doesn't have the sense wire at all. So it's all to do, by the way, with how the battery, I think, handles the overcharge and overcurrent and those sorts of states. So you can see that there's some circuitry on the back of batteries just at the top on most of them. And this one too, but maybe this one is a simpler one, or if it's, because maybe it doesn't have a sensor, it's got more, who knows? I'm sure Google knows. Just as an observation, the battery wires, this is a tablet one by the way, are a lot thinner than the ones coming off that smaller pack. So if you think of current delivery, these things are tiny thin. So we're going to put the negative on there. Again, if you did what I did there and I stripped both down, just make sure they don't touch <laughs> while you're messing around. So you can make your own battery pack so easy this way. And then you can just dump this into a bag or something and you're done. So we're going to put the charging thing in first. Let's see how that goes. As you can see the red light flashing, so you've got your battery charging going on. I mean, this could be also a nice way of adding something. If you've got like a device that uses one of these batteries, like a radio controlled car, and it comes with a whole, you know, chargey thing that you want to avoid using, you could maybe just solder this in as part of the circuit and put your own little charge port. So we'll hook that back on there. Oh, LED 2 is flashing now. I'm not sure what that means, but the screen's not coming on. Oh, but LED 2 went off. And then nothing. I think it's maybe saying that this battery's dead. I think that's going to be the, uh, the takeaway from that one. Probably worth charging it up. Put that on volts. It says it's got 2.9 volts in it, so that doesn't look so hot. And if we put the other one on, and that is 3.87 volts. So yeah, this one's going to need charging up. And we'll just do that. And that's it now. I've got the option of just easily charging up these batteries. I don't have to find any of those fancy schmancy chargers. Now what am I going to do? Let's have a look with this one. Let's put that wire back. I don't fancy cutting off that wire just in case I eventually one day need to use it. So what I'd just do is put a bit of tape. And I've got my ever trusty roll of earth bonding insulating tape. And I'm just going to put a little piece on there. I'm actually going to just take the effort to actually trim it properly. I think that's going to look mighty pretty, just like that. So I think for the cost of those modules, which was literally, I don't know, like a pound each, maybe less. Really, there were nothing. Um, look what you're getting. You're getting a USB socket. You're getting a nice LED there. And then maybe a second LED that does something if you solder it on. Probably just... Who knows? <laughs> I'm not going to guess. You get a little uh, choke, a little inductor thing. You get a charge controller chip. And then you get a micro USB port for charging up. So you get everything on a nice little PCB. And you can just plop that in a sock or something, and then you've got your hipster-style USB power bank, and you just pull out your sock and start charging. I mean, I'm trying to think of scenarios where this could be interesting. I mean, I think if you could do, if you could combine some of these things, I mean, this is 7.2 volts, 
at 1860 milliamp hours and this is a thousand I feel that you could probably get a cell that would easily fit in one of those and then you could fit this kind of thing in it although to be honest with you look, there's not much room for that but you know what I mean you're getting at that you could have a cell like this that you can just literally plug a USB thing into it to charge up rather than having to use all the stupid could chunk you know charge bases now that technology's moved on so I hope that's of some use to you if you want to go and make your own please do I'd love to see your creation send me some pics or join me on the discord with some pics of what you eventually put this into to make it a bit safer in your bag stop airports taking it off you as ever thanks for watching